Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name is Nehemiah and today we're going to be checking out this piece of metal, the GSD, which is by Leong Ma. Uh, GSD stands for Get Ish Done. So yeah, I guess it's kind of like a utility folder or it's made to literally cut poop. We'll find out. Stay tuned. First thing we'll do is our size comparison. I've got our usual suspects. We've got the Spyderco PM2 and the Para 3. This is a perfectly medium sized knife. Cutting edge is about three-ish inches. Uh, blade length is about 3.25. Blade thickness is 0.16, a little on the thick side. And then steel type is S35VN. We've got titanium, kind of black titanium here uh, with some G10 inlays. The black and white is kind of a uh, Oreo type knife review set that I'm about to do. I've, I've done this one. Um, this is the Micro Typhoon, Brian Nadeau. Uh, great knife, check out that review. That's kind of old school, early channel days. Uh, and then I've got a CKF that I'll be reviewing coming up, which is also Oreo themed, with a little splash of blue. Uh, but for now, we're checking out the GSD, uh, which should be a fun review. Let's get a quick weigh in here, see what we're working with. Um, I don't know if this is going to quite make the golden ratio of one, one ounce per inch. And that's definitely, it's about an extra ounce over if it was going to hit the golden uh, ratio, but... Um, you know, it's uh, kind of fitting that this is the GSD. It's kind of fat like a turd. And just so you can have a shot next to a ruler to give you an idea. Yeah, cutting edge is 3.25. It's a little bit longer than that for the actual blade length. I got that wrong. Uh, decent, decent size, though, for the grip area, which is nice. And with the objective stuff out of the way, we're going to get into the dent. The dent is the decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible of this piece of metal. First off, in the decent, we're gonna talk about this blade shape. Now, having, you know, just a standard, kind of a little bit of flats, a little bit of belly, kind of a drop point with a swedge on top. This is a pretty well-rounded blade, I would say. Um, the grind isn't like super high and it's definitely not hollowed out. This is a flat grind. It's not like the sliciest blade ever, but, you know, kind of have it. As advertised, it is a pretty good utility cutter. It, it can handle most tasks. Maybe not your primary choice for a particular cut, but if you're not sure what kind of cut you're gonna do, this is a good kind of just middle of the road, acceptable blade shape for most tasks. Uh, and it does pretty good job on that end. So that's good. S35 uh, being on the on the blade steel, that, that's a solid, you know, steel type, I don't want to poo-poo it too much here, but, you know, I kind of would have liked to see a slightly better steel here. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe the, the GSD makes me think of food prep is a mix of that, and, you know, S35VN is definitely a stainless steel, don't get me wrong. I just, I don't know, maybe something a little bit more corrosion resistance, uh, resistant than that to maybe spice it up a bit. I'm not, I'm not necessarily asking for a Van X, and I know I could always say this in every video. I, <laughs> I wouldn't have, I would have enjoyed LC200N as like the perfect kind of do anything blade. I think that steel type would kind of live up to the name or the kind of angle that they're going for on this one. But ultimately, I think in the vast majority of cases, you know, most people could own this knife for a long time, and the difference between those two steels would never come up. So. Ultimately, the blade shape and the blade steel is going to end up in the decent, but it could have been in the excellent if it was a little bit thinner and if it was a better steel type. I really like the clip on this. It's uh, it's a pretty standard you know clip. There's nothing like super innovative going on here, but uh, it's a good shape. It's high enough. It is kind of below the lanyard hole, which normally I really don't like, but it's off to the side and the knife is kind of angled off right here. So... You know, depending on the geometry of your pocket, it's not too bad. Um, you can kind of tug it out from up here. I like when the, the clip is kind of further this way or in the middle. And the middle's fine, but it just kind of 
forces the knife into the back of your pocket so that you get more space in there, uh, which is kind of cool. It, I will say it's a little bit tight. That's why it's not getting the excellent, but still, it's, it's decent. Next thing I want to talk about are the ergonomics. Now, I think the good news here is I don't think this is going to be a booby trap for anybody. I have medium-sized hands, and it fits perfectly fine. It, it, it's good. But it's got a little extra room on the end, so if you have large fingers, I don't think your pinky is in danger of being in an awkward position. Uh, the knife is thick enough that it's not too thin. It's thin enough that it's not too thick. And ultimately, you know, it's it's a very neutral grip. There's not a lot in the ways of hot spots. You kind of have this like little ledge right here that could double as a finger finger choil here. And if you need to get close to blade, I think this grip is perfectly adequate for short periods of time. If I was going to do some cutting long term, you know, let's say I was prepping for like a, a big you know, banquet or something like that, and I'm using this to cut up all the vegetables, I think I would get pretty sick of that grip. Um, it's it's just a little blocky right here. It's putting your middle finger kind of awkwardly up too much. So brief periods, it's fine. It, it, it's, not, it's not like, ooh, yeah, this is great, but it's also nothing really pointing or sticking up at you. So ultimately, ends up in the decent. Next is the fit and finish, and I'm going to dive into the OCD, uh, which is kind of an extension of fit and finish, but kind of the normal things we look at. Centering it is dead on. The stuff that should be chamfered is chamfered. There's no gaps or anything where there shouldn't be. Uh, knife is definitely assembled correctly. It's easy to take it apart, put it back together for the most part. Um, no mechanical issues, uh, really. There's a few nitpicks I'll go over in the nitpick section, but it's perfectly adequate there was no like oh my goodness i can't believe you did this last thing in the decent is the ocd i if you're new <laughs> this is the open the close and the disengage kind of our zoom in feature on the action of the the knife for the people that like me really care about action and really want to know what to expect if they're thinking about picking up the knife We've got two ways to open the knife. We've got kind of a, a hidden flipper tab. It's it's exposed, you know, when the knife is is uh, closed, but when it's open, it kind of disappears into the frame of the knife, as you can see here. Uh, it 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 does a good job. The issue is you're trying to tuck the flipper tab out of the way here, so it doesn't give you a lot of space to work. Uh, push button is not really a thing here. It's got to be light switch but you, you kind of have to angle it up this way instead of this way back. And so you're kind of bumping up into this if you're not careful. It doesn't give you a lot of follow through, I guess. You're kind of, you know, chink right at the top of your finger instead of like a full, I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, it, it just, as soon as you do the flipper tab, you know, oh, this is kind of not super comfortable. It is reliable though. The detent is snappy enough. It, even if you kind of do it wimpy, it still gets out. So it, you're not getting like the full satisfaction of a good flipper tab because, you know, your finger is kind of uncomfortable. But as far as the actual action, totally fine. Uh, you have the opening aperture is the second way to do it. Now, your mileage might vary. I'm so used to spidey flicking things that it's really, really second nature to me. So this, you know, to me, I think is perfectly adequate. I like it probably twice as much as using that flipper tab because it's not so awkward or uncomfortable. Um, it's good. I It's not super thick. You know, I'm using the meat of my finger, not my nail. I can't, you can't really get your nail underneath. It's just not enough opening space right there to really get that done. So that's where you might run into some troubles if you use your nail normally instead of the meat of your finger. So word, word of warning there. Uh, as far as the disengage goes, it's it's pretty decent. Uh, you have plenty of open access. You can not quite see the lock bar from the presentation side, but uh, pretty well chamfered and just the thickness of the hole, the gap. Uh, it's pretty easy to get in there horizontally. You can get really close to the to the top of the lock bar, so you have lots of of leverage. And there's the steel lock bar insert going on in there, so there's no lock stick. Really, the disengage is probably excellent. That little hidden flipper tab is the perfect kind of landing spot. Just blonk right into your thumb there. Uh, so the blade isn't so in danger of falling on you. Uh, 
for the drop shot now i was kind of disappointed it's a little it's definitely not free flowy if i go really hard i can get it in one jostle but i would say normal jostles you're looking at probably two on average three light ones you're kind of you're shimmying the knife to get to get it down it, it's a safe close i would say it you know so a, a, a guillotine type open is going to be an issue or a close rather is going to be issue for some people so you know some people might be encouraged by that fact next let's get into the excellent first thing or only thing really in the excellent is just the look of the knife i i usually don't do something so subjective um but i wanted to find something to that i could really kind of praise the knife for and i just really like the look of the knife i i don't know what it is about these like oreo type white and black uh finishes but it just it's so classy to me it's just big enough that you know you can do the really big knife things it's just small enough to where maybe you could pull it off as like a gentleman's folder and i really like that i think this is you know offering something that could be you know unique just in the profile of the knife uh, it's definitely distinct. It looks like a Leon, Leon Ma knife, you know, pretty much right away. Um, and so I, I just, the, the lines of it, the materials, while not super duper premium, you know, titanium obviously is good. You know, the G10, normally people kind of turn their nose up at G10, but here it's so classy and just, you know, tastefully used that I think it kind of, negates the normal negatives of having a g10 predominant handle so i kind of like to call that out you know it just it looks good to my eyes <laughs> you know if this is your your you know brand of of uh, knife shape or you know style but i'm gonna put it in the excellent just so there's something in the excellent <laughs> next is the nitpicks and i've got a few things here so that Hidden flipper tab, you know, I kind of highlighted this in the OCD. It, it, it's something that, I don't know, I, I don't think I'm ever going to get used to or get to a point where I can learn to open the knife without just using the opening aperture to kind of get around that. So, you know, for my brain, I'm basically just imagining that that flipper tab's not there. It's kind of disappointing that it's just so meh of an of a opening. Um, the other thing is the... Opening aperture is just not really well chamfered at all. This is actually very sharp here. So I, I don't think I'm cutting myself, but it definitely, it kind of nips you a little bit. It's, it, I don't know. It just, I think it, it would have benefited from having a little bit more opening aperture area. So maybe you could get your fingernail in there. And then a good strong chamfer would also help the finger uh, get in there a little bit better, not be so sharp, maybe give people that use their nail uh, a chance to do it that way. Next is just how very thick the blade is. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty beefy stock. You know, like a PM2 starts out about that thick, but the distal taper on the PM2 is so good that, you know, if you need to cut something, you know, in the middle section, it's going to slice a lot better than this. It's kind of a fatty all the way through. Uh, I think this either needed to be thinner blade stock or maybe a really strong hollow grind to kind of help it a little bit. Um, I don't know. I, I'm i trying to think of, you know, if this is the kind of utility knife so it can handle anything, you know, they want to have the beefy part for like the really beefy use case, I guess, maybe. So I don't know. Uh, whenever you're trying to have your cake and eat it too, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, make some kind of compromise here. And I think it's just, you know, whatever kind of cut, you could probably get it done. It's just never going to be super pleasurable for that particular kind of cut because it's in no man's land. So I don't know. I, I wish it was either thinner or had the hollow grind. Next nitpick is just how much of a turd this is. It, it, it really is pretty thick and heavy. There's no attempt to mill out any of the internals. I think that's a huge knock. You know, if it, if it ends up being a heavy knife, but I see a bunch of internal milling, it's like, well, you know, at least you tried. It would have been much better had you not. And then if you don't, you have this. And it's just like, oh, well, you know, for this price, which is coming up, 
Uh, I would expect a little bit more effort put into making this a better EDC knife. You know, if that's the angle of like, hey, it can do any cut, you know, you're, you're making the compromise of just having one knife on you for the day. You know, it'd be nice if that knife was a little bit lighter, you know, so... Eh, I think that's kind of a miss. I already mentioned this a little bit, but I really don't like the placement of this lanyard hole. It's just kind of like it's randomly there. I don't know why it needs to be there. I think the clip being there and the lanyard hole being back here would have been perfect. I just, I don't know. I like clips that are here and then angled this way. Um, it might make it look a little bit weird when you're just looking at the knife, but I think in practice it just, it would perform better. Um, whatever. I always complain about lanyard holes. <laughs> With the nitpicks out of the way, we're getting into terrible, and I actually have something to put in the terrible today, and that is the aforementioned price. The sucker is clocking in at $375. And, you know, this has kind of sparked a, an idea or a philosophy video, which I'll be putting out here soon, but this is going to be your sneak peek on that. I think... 350 to 375 is kind of like the no man's land for knife prices because you know i i'm expecting something as good as like a pison or you know maybe a uh chris reeve you know sabenza or something along that line and so it's it's you know kind of a high price tag but you're just you know you're falling short of it a little bit as far as what materials you can use uh, you know, if you make a if you make a knife in China for that price, it's like, why is that so expensive? If you make that knife here in America, it's like, oh, in order to get that price, you had to make some you know key sacrifices. Maybe internal milling might have been one of those sacrifices. Uh, the materials used. Um, I don't know. Just I think some of the problems that I have with the knife could be because of the price it, it, it's just either make this a little bit cheaper more of a compelling piece with re retaining most of the same components s35 vn black titanium and some ivory g10 scales okay you know price that at like 300 dollars, and i'm still like okay that that's what the knife should cost you know i, I might even push for 275 to make it like really compelling but for 375 I feel like, oh, man, you know, 35, S35EN seems a little bit underwhelming. The G10 seems a little bit underwhelming. You know, the you no know, milling seems a little bit underwhelming for that price. You know, you look at something like the Drunken, which is just, you know, another, I don't know, $30 more, and you've got, you know, carbon fiber, you have a better steel, you have internal milling, it's like way lighter the blade is a better shape so you know comparing it to like any other knife it's hard to ever make a good justification for this uh so for that reason i'm putting it in the terrible let's wrap it up in the conclusion i i i want to like this knife i do i it's just once you get it in hand and you know i i had spent probably half the time reviewing the knife not knowing the price and I was already kind of making the same conclusion of like a near miss. You know, there's there's just like two or three things that I think really needed to be changed in order for this to really be a compelling, unique option for someone. But once I saw that price and I was guessing something like, you know, $100 less than that. I know Leong Ma's kni knives aren't that inexpensive. I know they tend to be in that range, give or take. But still, I thought, well, maybe this is like his budget option or something. But no, it's not. And I was pretty thoroughly disappointed when I saw that price tag. So, you know, if price is not an issue for you and this is just your, your jam, you love the look of it, you like thick blade stock, maybe you like heavy knives. I, I mean, who are you? But whatever, if you exist and I'm talking to you, go ahead and get this knife. For people that I think want a little bit more, with people that are familiar with kind of what the going rate on these things in the market is, I feel like this knife is going to be kind of a miss for a lot of people. I don't know. Uh, sound off in the comments. Do you think this is a, a good pickup for somebody? Would, would it be the kind of knife you recommend to somebody else, but you wouldn't ever buy yourself? You know, maybe that could be a little bit telling of the knife. Hopefully this helps you make a decision. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.